John Pat Chaplin so probably my favourite type of Chaplin and the Blood Angels are lucky enough to have two unique Chaplins that like to soar to battle on wings of fire. Today we'll be taking a look at Chaplin's Astera and the Martys. Hello and welcome back to Autopex Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel where we like to get the most out of our miniatures on the table. We're getting to the end of our series on Blood Angels now, having covered the majority of the key units in the book. If there are any other facets of the Blood Angels army that you think I should look at, then please let me know down in the comments. We'll be looking at another Blood Angels army in a couple of days time, before moving on to look at other things, including the Imperial Guard, but I've got absolutely nothing against covering the Blood Angels further, maybe with another video once every one or two weeks, depending on what subjects crop up. Today though, we'll be looking at Lamartes and Astarath, the two named chaplains that got updated datasheets in Blood of Bar. We'll be taking a look at those datasheets, and the obvious buffs and synergies that we can see on the table, and then how I would use them in a game of 40k. In the background, Lamartes is one of the only Blood Angels to bring the Black Vage under control, remaining afflicted by the torturing visions of Sanguinius dying that bring about an almost unstoppable rage, but yet able to keep that in check due to the strong force of his will. He now serves as the Blood Angels Chaplain Guardian of the Lost and helps shepherd his fellow afflicted Death Company into battle and make sure their horrendous rage is deployed in a helpful fashion against the enemy rather than against their own battle brothers. Astarath, on the other hand, is the High Chaplain of the Blood Angels chapter who, unlike most chapters, has a special duty. He is tasked with executing any of his battle brothers who the Black Rage has overcome and are no longer able to distinguish friend from foe due to their rage. It's a noble and important role, but one that is forever stained in the blood of his battle brothers, making him a grim and aloof figure within the Blood Angels chapter. He carries his executioner's axe, which he uses to sever the heads from the poor death company, who have lost control of themselves, and to grant them the Emperor's peace. So let's take a look at what they can both do on the battlefield. Now I've chosen to cover these guys in the same video, because they share a whole ton of similarities. They are both Blood Angels chaplains with jump packs, they are very similar in points cost. The Martis is 100 points and Astarath is 105. They both carry a fancy boosted close combat weapon, both give out leadership buffs and have a 4 imbul save with their Azarius, and have some additional synergy with Death Company. So let's take a look at the Martis first. So if you are 100 points, the Martis is an HQ for Blood Angels Space Marines. He has movement of 12, weapon skill 2 up. Ballistic skill 3 up, which is worse than Astaraths, Strength 4, Toughness 4, 4 wounds, 5 attacks, which I believe is excessively high due to his black rage that he's controlling, Leadership 9, and a 3 up save. He's armed with the Blood Crosius, a Crosius Arcanum that gives Strength plus 2, AP minus 2, and Damage D3, so a nice mid range weapon there, which will synergize very nicely with Red Thirsts plus 1 to wound. He also carries Frag and Crack grenades, and a Bolt Pistol. He has the standard Angels of Death special rule, meaning that he'll get Shock Assault, so it will usually be 6 attacks on the first round of combat, Combat Doctrines, which will help him out if he's in the Assault Doctrine, potentially for another attack in a pure Blood Angels force. He has the standard Jump Pack Assault, where you can put him in Deep Strike Reserve, and a Rosarius 4 4 up Inbal save. Then he has two unique special rules. Firstly, he has Guardian of the Lost, which means that Death Company within 6 inches of him can use his leadership instead of their own, which can be significant, as he's leadership 9 and they're only leadership 7, so could potentially fail some morale checks. It's interesting to note that the other Blood Angels don't follow his leadership, as is the case for most chaplains. Maybe they disrespect him too much as he's fallen to the Black Rage, so can't be trusted or something. His other special rule, which is the really good one, is Fury Unbound. When a friendly Death Company model within 6 inches of him makes a charge roll, you can re-roll the dice. This is incredibly handy for Death Company charging out of Deep Strike, particularly in combination with Red Thirst for the plus 1 to charge, or if he takes the plus 2 to charge Litany, it could make for a very reliable charge indeed. Furthermore, when resolving an attack made by a melee weapon for a friendly Death Company unit within 6 inches, you can re-roll the hit roll. So that's 4 Chapter Master style re-rolls for Death Company within 6 inches of him in close combat which is pretty mad as a buff that he can hand out just all of the time. It's worth noting that he has the Death Company keyword himself, so he will be able to re-roll any charges he makes, and also any hit rolls that he makes, 
boosting his charge reliability and combat proficiency further. The Death Company keyword also gives him access to certain stratagems. As a chaplain, he can recite a litany at the start of the battle round. He knows the litany of hate, but knows two additional litanies and can choose one to recite. We'll talk about the options a little bit more later, but it's good to know that he'll be a bit more flexible than your standard chaplain. So that's a potentially a lot of stacking buffs for an 100 point HQ that has a jump pack and decent close combat gear. The Martis is pretty amazing value when you're looking for a carriage to buff the death company. Let's move on to Astarath now then. As we said, he costs 105 points. He's got a 12 inch move, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 up, strength and toughness 4, 5 wounds, so a bit tougher, 4 attacks, so 1 less, leadership 9, but a 2 up save, so a little bit more durable. Again, he's armed with a bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades, but he has the executioner's axe. The executioner's axe is strength plus 2, AP minus 3, damage d3, and when you're resolving an attack with this weapon, when you roll a wound roll of 6 up, this weapon has a damage characteristic of 3. So the weapon itself is a little bit better than Lamartes' Blood Crozius, having an extra pip of AP and that special rule. But Lamartes does have an extra attack and also gets to re-roll his own hit rolls. So it's in close combat, they're fairly well balanced. Again, he has Angels of Death, which will most help out for Shock Assault, so he'll usually have 5 attacks on the charge, and Combat Doctrines, which might let him get to the Blood Angels Unique Doctrine for extra AP and an extra attack. He has the exact same Jump Pack Assault Reserves rule and Rosarius rule as Lamartes does, and again has two unique special rules. His ones are Redeemer of the Lost, which means that all Blood Angels units can use his Leadership 9 instead of their own when they're within 6 inches of him, and Death Company just also pass morale when within 6 inches of him, so his leadership buffs are far better than Lamartes'. He has Massive Doom, which you activate at the start of your movement phase, and you can only use this once per battle. You roll a d6 for each friendly Blood Angels infantry unit within 6 inches of him, and apply the results below. On a 1, the unit suffers a mortal wound, and no other effects happen. On a 2 to 5, so most likely, they'll get an additional plus 1 to hit in close combat until the end of the turn. And if you happen to roll a 6, you get to add plus 1 to their hit roll, but they also get a 4 up in ball save until the end of the turn. So that has the potential to be very nice. It's interesting that this can affect multiple units, so you could potentially drop a couple of really big nasty deep strike units nearby Astarath and get to roll for each of them before they charge into close combat. Sounds like a move that could absolutely decimate one of your opponent's flanks. I'd say that his special rules aren't quite as strong as the Martis's, but his real advantage is that he can chant two listeners per turn and he knows three from the litany of battle, which means he's doing twice the normal job as a chaplain will do. Again, we'll talk about litanies in a bit, but you've got multiple options for very powerful effects to go off at the same time, doubling down on his buffing ability on any nearby units. If you're just comparing Astarath to a normal chaplain, even if he didn't use any of his jump pack, fancy war gear or special rules, it could well be worth paying the extra 30 points to upgrade, just for the fact that he knows two litanies, just to underline just how great a special rule this is. So in my mind, Astarath is more of a chaplain that you want to definitely start on the board to make use of both litanies, maybe jumping out to meet other jump pack units that are coming down from reserve to buff them entering close combat. So let's look at some of the obvious buffs and synergies that we can do with these guys. Firstly, as I mentioned before, both of their unique war gear options synergize quite well with Red Thirst, giving them plus 1 to wound, meaning that they'll be wounding anything toughness 5 or below on a 2, and everything toughness 7 or higher is still on a 4, so they're going to be pretty good against most targets. The plus 1 to charge is also not too bad either, particularly on Lamartis with that innate re-roll of charges. Both of these guys have Soul Warden as their innate warlord trait. This is the warlord trait that allows them to deny a power as if they were a psyker. It's not an awful warlord trait, but I do feel that there are better ones out there, particularly Artisan of War. It might be worth buying in a warlord trait in games where you are facing heavy psychic presence, but I wouldn't make one of these guys your default warlord for every game. The biggest decision with these guys is what Lytton is to take with them and there are a whole number of ones which can be very strong with Blood Angels. One of the more obvious ones would be the plus 2 to advance and charge rolls, so if your chaplain starts on the board, moves and advances with their jump pack to meet one of your assault units that's coming in from Deep Strike, and then they'll be in the aura of the plus 2 to charge, meaning that they'll get into close combat a lot more easily. 
because failed charges can cost games. The Litany of Hate to re-roll hits in close combat can certainly be a solid option too, particularly if your unit doesn't already have a source of re-rolls. The Blood Angel's unique Litany will give you AP-4 on a wound roll of a 6, somewhat similar to the old Rending rule, and this could be a nasty addition to a squad armed with chain swords, and is just one additional buff that you can throw on your melee Death Star. The old reliables from Codex Space Marines are also great, getting plus 1 to hit on any unit is strong, and also plus 1 to wound the closest unit is also great. Blood Angel's lists don't usually tend to focus on shooting, but I believe that most strong lists in 40k will have an element of both shooting and close combat, so buffing up a strong shooting unit is far from a waste of your points. Finally, Mantra of Strength is great on both of these guys, due to their very decent close combat that they already have. This can give you plus 1 strength, attack and damage for your chaplain, turning them into a little blender machine, which will only get nastier if you start using some stratagems on them. In terms of synergy with other units, obviously both have great synergy with Death Company, particularly Lamartis. Lamartis is so cheap that he's very close to being an auto-include in any list that you're bringing in a big unit of Death Company or two from Deep Strike Reserve. Astrath is a little bit more flexible, as that mass of doom can affect a whole bunch of other units, such as Sanguinary Guard or Vanguard Vets for example, and having two litanies, those buffs can most certainly be applied to other units. The chaplains themselves can also benefit from other characters, such as the Sanguinor giving them extra attacks, or re-rolls from Ancients or Lieutenants or Dante or things. Sanguinary Priests could also give them extra strength and heal them, while also buffing the same unit as the chaplains are. In terms of stratagems, as we've already covered a few times, there are a whole host of stratagems that are available to Blood Angels, characters with jump packs. Old staples are Red Rampage for an extra D3 attacks on the charge, fighting when you die with Upon Death to Duty End, and fighting again with Honor the Chapter, which if used on a souped up chaplain with Mantra of Strength and possibly some other buffs, could really decimate an entire infantry squad. Upon Wings of Fire is an interesting choice for chaplains, because it means that you could, say, have Astarath on the board, cast the Litany of Hate and the Aura of plus 2 to advance and charge, and then use the On Wings of Fire stratagem to move him over to where some Deep Strike Reserves are coming in, thus sort of allowing you to bring a Chaplain in from Deep Strike Reserve alongside your Death Company or Sanguinary Guard, and still have his Litanies playing to full effect. There's plenty of other solid options, including transhuman physiology for if you situationally need them to absolutely survive some high strength attacks, or potentially descent of angels for a 3d6 inch charge, though you're usually going to be wanting to use this on bigger meteor squads or fightier characters. If we're talking about in-game, then both chaplains will obviously profit from starting on the board if you can, so they can cast their litanies which happen at the start of the battle round. I would absolutely start Astarath on the board, due to him having two litanies and a lot of his value being there. For Martis, however, I could be swayed on a bit more. I think that his special rules for buffing Death Company are solid enough to be absolutely worth it, regardless of whether or not he even casts his litany, so I could absolutely see him coming in from Deep Strike Reserve just to buff the Death Company squad, and then the turn after, presuming he survives, he could use one of his litanies, maybe even just Mantra of Strength, to either buff the squad he was with, or to buff him into a rage machine. If you're starting them on the board, then I'd think about where the units that you're wanting to buff will likely turn up from Deep Strike, or if you're starting those units on the board, where they're going to be to access the chaplain buffs. Obviously make sure they're screened from enemy fire, if they have snipers, put them out of line of sight, and as we said, consider starting Lamartis off the board, if it's easier. Usually these guys are going to be most useful turn 2 or turn 3 when your reserves are coming in, jump them forward to meet an incoming deep strike unit and give them the various buffs, perhaps that litany of plus two to advance and charge, perhaps re-rolls or other close combat buffs, and most certainly either massive doom for Astarath, and re-rolling charges and re-rolling hits for death company from Lamartis. Certainly think about charging these guys in themselves as well, but do bear in mind that they're not really all that tough compared with your standard space marines, and they might well just get killed by counter-attack if you try and pick on something that's too nasty and destructive, if it's the choice between keeping them alive and potentially just doing a few extra wounds to a big fighty squad, it's probably going to be worth just keeping them alive for a turn, and even if your opponent kills them in the next turn, at least they will have had to commit lots of resources to do that. That being said, if you can use their melee profile without getting them killed, 
you should absolutely do that, as it is a large part of their value. Certainly consider all of the close combat buffing stratagems as situation demands, particularly Red Rampage and Only in Death and Fighting Again, though sometimes it may be a lot more valuable to use these command points on the big units that they're likely to be buffing. So overall, I think that both of these characters are fantastically good value HQ choices for Codex Blood Angels. I don't really want to recommend one over the other, as they're both very strong but do slightly different things. Two litanies on its own is absolutely great for Astarath, all of the extra random special rules that he gets are just added value in my mind. And I'd say that the reverse is true for Lamartis. His death company rerolls and reroll charges are absolutely amazing. The fact that he can do listeners, fight well in close combat, and has some leadership benefits are all just added value. I particularly like the way that the Blood Angels chaplains both come with jump packs, which is very rare for other Codex's unique characters to have this kind of mobility so it really helps them stand head and shoulders above the rest. There are alternatives to these guys out there. We all know that the Blood Angels Codex is absolutely swamped with characters that buff melee units well, such as the Sanguinor, Dante, Sanguinary Priests, Sanguinary Ancients, Librarians, and more, but both of these guys are pretty cheap at 100 points each, pretty good in a scrap, reasonably survivable with that 4-up invul, and their buffs are also powerful so I think that they compete very well compared with the options. I do also think that these could absolutely be run as a pair to buff Death Company. You could stack a hell of a lot of buffs between three litanies, as well as all the special rules that they get. It will be quite a concentration of buffs, and their buffs don't really overlap all that much. Let me know your thoughts on these guys down below in the comments. They're both really fun little units, and they just add to the difficulty of which HQs to pick for Blood Angels, because they're generally all pretty awesome. As I said, if there's any other Blood Angels content that you'd like, let me know your thoughts and ideas down below. I'll most certainly read every comment. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics for more, for more Imperial, Space Marine and Blood Angels related content like this. And if you enjoy my videos, please check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks very much for listening. I'll hope to see you guys next time.